Hello, this is Product Manager Martin Brennan, and welcome to this exciting and visually stunning tutorial in Mocha Preferences. Now, even though Preferences is a dull array of tabs and options, I still recommend tuning in, as knowing a little bit about how to set up defaults in Mocha can really save you a lot of hassle when starting a new project. So let's dive right in. We're going to go straight into Preferences in Mocha Pro here. We've got Preferences here in OS X. On Windows, you'll find Preferences under the File menu, and that's the same for Linux. So I'm going to click Preferences here, and we've got this lovely array of tabs. So I'm going to come over to Output Settings to begin with, and we're going to talk about each of these individual preferences. Okay, so first let's take a look at the Output Directory. This is set by default to Relative Path, and what that means is that when you create a new project, we will create a results folder in the same path as the clip you're using for that project. If you don't like having additional data or folders in the same directory as your source footage, you can set an absolute path to send it somewhere else by default. And the default at the moment is set to the cache directory on your system. If you want a different directory, you just type it in here, or you can choose it over here with the choose button. And we tell you how much disk space is available for that particular directory. I'm gonna set that back to relative path. Now down here we have the cache directory where Mocha sends all of its data to process, and by default this is set to the MoTemp directory. On Linux and OS X it's on var temp MoTemp, and on Windows it's C MoTemp. But you can set your cache directory to wherever you like as well, and again, choose it over here. Down here we have a checkbox to cache the original clip by default in new projects as well. We don't recommend turning this on at all unless you're working on a very slow network and you want to make sure that that clip is cached directly to your hard drive instead. But most of the time you're not going to need to turn this on. So now let's go ahead and look at system. So this page controls a lot of the stuff that will happen for your general workflow. Up here we have enable autosave. And we do recommend you keep that on because saving regularly is really important. We have an interval for how often it saves here in minutes. I've got a fairly paranoid setting here of one, but you can set this to whatever you like. We also have an option to save images every frame, which just generates things like the mat files in your results directory on every frame, rather than doing it as a process over time. Down here we have the undo history size, and this is set to a very generous 90. I mean, if you have to really undo 90 times, we probably recommend you actually go back to your previous autosave, but 90 is a nice value to make sure that if there's a lot of mistakes or you just want to change something, you can undo far enough back in the timeline. You can ramp this up if you want to, but a bigger size obviously is going to mean more memory used to store those undos. Down here we have a useful section for Mocha Plus and Mocha Pro users who are also working with After Effects. By default, when you go to the After Effects animation menu and choose Track in Mocha AE, it will load the light bundled version of Mocha AE to do your tracking in Roto. If you would prefer to use Mocha Plus or Mocha Pro, you can check this box inside the preferences here and this will load it instead. It will still say Track in Mocha AE in the animation menu, but Mocha Pro or Mocha Plus will be loaded instead. Over in this column we have a field called Number of Shown Layouts, and by default this is set to 3. This just defines how many layouts you want to use in the view menu. So if we come over here to the view menu, you can see I've got Layout 1, Layout 2, and Layout 3, and you can name these whatever you like, but you can see I've only got 3 here in the view menu. If we make this a larger value, we'll get more layouts to use if we need them, or less if you want. So generally we find 3 is a good value to work with because you only usually need to switch between a few layouts, but if you want less or more, you can change it here. This is a really important one down here for if you prefer to work with linear controls over rotational controls. A rotational control is basically when I hover over any kind of field, you can see that I've got a little rotational cursor here. And as I rotate around the field, you'll see it up, and rotate the other way, it'll go down. So this is a common rotational control, but some people much prefer to use linear controls, which is where if you drag left and right, it will up the value like a slider instead. Well, I prefer using rotational controls, so I keep it to the default. And we also have an option to inverse the mouse wheel, so that when you scroll up, values will go up, and if you scroll down, values will go down, and inverting will obviously reverse that. Over in layer settings, this is more of the look and how layers are going to be drawn. So we have default colors for the spline, the mat, the active points, and the deactivated points, so you can change your colors there if you prefer. 
We also have a default opacity for the mat here set to 0.5, which you can see up here in the view controls. If you set it to 1, obviously it will be completely opaque. If you set it to 0, it will be completely transparent. And so 0.5 is just the middle ground that we chose. Down here, we have the X-Blind default weight and the Bezier default weights. And this is just basically how curved the spline is going to be when you draw it. So in the example of X-Blind, if this was set to 0, we would have corners when we drew splines rather than a smooth curve. If we set it to 1, it would be the most rounded possible for that spline. And the same goes for the Bezier default length. This just sets how smooth that curve is going to be. Right, let's get a little bit more technical with the OpenGL tab. Most of the things in OpenGL you're probably not going to need to touch, and in fact we recommend you don't touch them unless you know what you're doing or you've been recommended to by support. Use Vertical Sync is just basically that. It will use Vertical Sync to display the clips in the frame display. So this is always on by default and we never recommend turning it off because weird things might happen. Down here we have the amount of texture RAM to use for when you're doing things like matte rendering and spline rendering. This can be probably up to about 50 to 75% of your texture RAM. So if you've got a 2 gigabyte set of RAM, you could set this all the way up to probably about 1.5, but we don't recommend setting it too high because you want that texture RAM available for other applications. So about 50% would probably do. Here in stereo, we've got the ability to enable active stereo, and this is only a feature for Mocha Pro. So if you're using active shutter lenses for your stereo work, you can enable it here, and then that will appear in the 3D tab when you're using the stereo mode. Here for matte rendering, we have this option to disable off-screen buffers, and this is off by default because we want to be using the hardware to render those mats. If you've got any graphics card issues or you're getting some errors when you're trying to track, disabling off-screen buffers may help with that because it will switch back to CPU rendering. This will be slower and not as good quality because we're switching away from hardware rendering, but this will help alleviate some problems if you're not getting anywhere with the mats working because your graphics card or your drivers might be conflicting with the system. And because this is underlying system stuff, you will need to restart Mocha when you change anything in the OpenGL page. So when you click OK, just reboot Mocha and everything will go great. Now let's have a look at the software update page. This one is super straightforward. It basically lets you turn on notifications if there's an update available, or you can manually check it with the big button in the middle. Now let's have a look at the clip page. This page is really, really useful for setting up defaults when you're working on a lot of shots that are going to be in the same format throughout your project. Here we can set the default frame rate if you're using an image sequence, and we also have a custom pixel aspect ratio which is set to 1 by default, so if you're using a lot of custom aspect ratios, you can just choose custom and it will automatically default to the value you've set in preferences. Down here we set up how you would prefer to view the frames. So by default we've set frames and a fixed frame offset of 0. So we can see here down in the timeline we've got 0 set as our default. If you prefer to work on a different fixed frame offset such as 1001 you can define that here. Or you can turn off fixed frame offset and read from the image sequence or clip by using just the frames instead. And it will try and work out from that sequence or clip what the frame offset is going to be. Or alternatively, you can use timecode if you prefer using that. So I'm going to set that back to the default. Down here in format, we have the options to choose your particular color space. So if you're working with log for a lot, you can actually set this as the default so you don't have to keep on setting it in either your new project or your clip page. By default, we set this to linear though. And you can choose to convert that image sequence or clip to float or 8-bit if you need to. Format for results clips defines the type of format that's going to be output to your results folder. By default it's set to DPX to make sure you've got a high quality output, but you can also set it to TIFF, which is equally nice for the high bit depths. Keep in mind this comes out to the results folder, and you can use the TIFF or DPX sequences from results if you want to, but you can also go ahead and export them as separate rendered clips or shapes using the format you prefer. Down here we have some additional things for multi-view EXI output for Mocha Pro. You can choose to either export by default to multi-part EXI files, or if you want channel-based, you've got the option here as well. If you're still working with interlaced footage, you can set up by default to separate the fields here and choose whether it's an upper or lower and if there's any 3-2 pull-down. 
This is really, really useful if you're doing a lot of interlace projects again, and you want to make sure that it's by default always in your new project dialogues. Setting a default clip mask is really, really useful if you're working with a lot of shots that have any type of letterboxing. So you can set a default top and bottom of, say, 130 pixels to block out the black lines on top of your clips, and then you don't have to keep on resetting it every time in the clip tab. Like the clip tab, the lens tab in the preferences is really useful for setting up defaults if you're using a lot of lens distortion in each individual shot. So you can define the type of camera model, the principal center point, and the distortion model if you know it. Another technical one over here is the logging tab. This just basically means it will enable error logging, so if you have any problems such as format or license issues, you can send us the log file here, which is also available from the help menu under view log. And you've got an option of choosing whether it's a comprehensive log or a normal log. By default, it's set to comprehensive, and we do recommend keeping it as comprehensive so that we've got as much information as possible to help you out with any problems that you hit. And finally up here we have key shortcuts, which is a really comprehensive tool for defining shortcuts for almost everything in the interface. We do have some presets set up for After Effects, Cinema 4D, Fusion and Nuke, but you can create duplicates of those and then modify them to what you need. If you're hunting for a particular action, you can use the filter box to actually filter it down. So I can type in something like save, and the categories below will filter to just the things involving the word save. So that's all you need to know about Mocha preferences. If you have any questions, as always, you can go to our forums at imagineersystems.com, email us at support at imagineersystems.com, or just leave us a comment on our Facebook page, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for watching.